you for this day that we're able to come here in the middle of the week and to study a portion of your word father we pray that you be with the words that gary is going to speak to us let them be able to reach us and touch our hearts and be able to be applied to our lives and be able to show everyone your love father we thank you for all of the opportunities that we have through this live streaming lord we need to continue to look at the positives in everything just thank you that we're able to reach those that we can reach and even beyond what we know, those that we are reaching, we're so thankful that we're able to do that and to share your love and your word and your message with all of those people. Father, we pray that you be with us as we continue to go through all of these times together. We pray that we lean on one another for understanding and strength and just anything that we might need. Know that we're all in this together and that we're all there for each other. Father, we pray that you be with us as we finish out this week and look forward to beginning next week. Pray that you be with us, keep us safe, and most of all, forgive us when we sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Thank you for being here with us this evening as we continue to take a look 
at what Paul has to say about the church as a body, a unified functioning body of Christ. And tonight we'll take a look at what he has to say to the church in Ephesus. And if you have your Bible there, it might be turning to the, the Paul's letter to the Ephesians. We'll be beginning to read from chapter 1 in just a, a, just a few seconds. We've seen in the book of Romans that we can be a body by conforming together. In 1 Corinthians, we saw that we need to submit together. And in 2 Corinthians, we saw that we need to con be comforted together. We have seen that Paul tells the churches in Galatia that they need to carry their burdens together. And tonight, we want to take a look at the idea that we need to walk together. The Christian walk is a very common theme in the New Testament, and it's very prevalent in the Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. And so we'll see that if we want to be a, a functioning, united body of Christ, we need to walk together. To be a united body, we must be one building built upon the only foundation. The first chapter of Ephesians is unique in the way that it uses the word in, the things that are in Christ or through Christ. Beginning in verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. And stop for just a second and just make note of the fact that it says, that every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places is in Christ. And as we read through this part of the chapter, we need to ask ourselves, if all of these things are in Christ, then what is there outside of Christ? If everything that is good is in Christ, then there's nothing outside of Christ that's important. Returning to the passage, it says, In love he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him with a view to, the, to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things upon the earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we who were fir the first to hope in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance, with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus which exists among you, and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you, while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. These are in accordance with the, not with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. To be a unified body, we must be one building built upon the only foundation. And it's clear from chapter 1 that the building and the foundation are Jesus himself. The idea continues on into chapter 2, beginning in verse 19. Paul says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, and are of God's household, having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together, into a dwelling of God 
in the spirit. To be a unified body, we must be one building built upon the Holy Spirit. To be a unified body, we must all come in through the same door. There is only one door, only one way to get into this one building. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 13. Paul says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by it having put to death the enmity. It is through Jesus that those of us who were far off have been brought near, and it is Jesus that reconciles us both in one body, both Jew and Gentile in one body, to Christ, or to God, through the cross. And to be a, uni a unified body, we need to come through the same door, and that door is Jesus. In chapter 4, beginning in verse 4, it points out that there is one body and one spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. In this passage, we find that we need to realize that there is only one body. There is only one spirit. There is one hope. There is one Lord. There is one faith. And we'll see that faith in just a second in chapter 2 and verse 8. There is one baptism. We are brought near by the blood of Jesus. It is that baptism when they come in contact with that blood, that one baptism. And there is one God and Father of all. If we go down to chapter 2 in that passage that includes verse 8, we find out that there is one grace, and that grace is described in this passage beginning in verse 4 of chapter 2. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in order that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. There is one grace. We are saved uh, by grace through faith. And there is one work, as it says in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There is one work, and that work has already been prepared for us by God. God has already prepared the work that we are to do, and we are his workmanship. And so we need to be uh, looking for that one work that he wants us to do. To be a unified body, we must be one building built upon the only foundation, and we must all come through the same door. That involves one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, one grace, and one work. To be a unified body, we must understand the same thing. Paul says in chapter 3, verse 4, that he has a certain insight, and he shares that insight with the church in Ephesus. He says there in verse 4, And by referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. He goes on a little bit later, by the way, and he points out that God makes that mystery known through the church, and he chooses the body of Christ to make that mystery known. But Paul has an insight into Jesus and the whole mystery surrounding Jesus, Remember that in the New Testament, a mystery is not something that's hidden. It is something that is revealed. It's a mystery only because it requires the revelation of God. And so that is the mystery of Christ, not something that's hidden, but something that is revealed. And Paul shares that insight with the church in Ephesus. And through this letter, he shares that insight with us. If we are to be a unified body, we must understand the same thing. We must have the same understanding or the same insight. To be a unified body, we must be filled with the fullness of God. Later in that chapter 3 of Ephesians, in verse 19, it says, And to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. To be a unified body, we must 
simply grow up. There is no glory in being an immature Christian. God does not allow us to become Christians and remain babes. He expects us to grow up. And that's what Paul tells the church in Ephesus in chapter 4, beginning in verse 14. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by that which every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. To be a unified body, we must grow up. How are we going to do that? How can we grow up the way we should? We do that by getting back to the job, the work that God has created for us to do. And when we each do our job, then we contribute to our own growth and to the growth of the body. In Ephesians chapter 4, in the, in the verses preceding the one we just read, beginning in verse 11, Paul says, He gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of of Christ. To be a unified body, we must be careful how we walk. And that's why we need to all walk together, as, it, as Paul tells the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, that passage we read earlier, that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Our walk should include the work that God has prepared for us. Paul talks about our, our walk in chapter 4 beginning in verse 17 and through verse 20. He says, This I say therefore, and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality, for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness, but you did not learn Christ in this way. And later in that chapter, he continues, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. We need to walk carefully and be careful how we walk and how we deal with each other. And Paul continues this idea into chapter 5. In verses 1 and 2, he says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you, and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. In verses 7 and 8, he says, Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Dropping down to verse 15, Paul says, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. To be a unified body, we must be in submission to one another in the fear of Christ, as Paul says in chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. He says, Be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Wives, be subject to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, 
that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body. For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each individual among you also love his own wife even as himself, and let the wife see to it that she respect her husband. Paul continues in chapter 6, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long upon the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in the sincerity of your heart, as to Christ, not by way of eye service, as men-pleasers, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will render service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good thing each one does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether slave or free. And masters do the same things to them, and give up threatening, knowing that both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. Paul explains the key to this concept that we read in chapter 5 and verse 32 where he says the mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. As we submit to one another, we are learning what it means to submit to Jesus and to be part of a unified body. It also works the other way around. As we learn to submit, as Christians learn to submit to Jesus, then we learn to submit to one another, to wives, to husbands, husbands to wives, children to parents, uh, slaves, in our case, employees to employers, and as we learn to submit to one another, uh, we learn to submit to Christ and the other way around. To be a unified body, we must be strengthened in the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10, Paul says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God, that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, with which you, you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. To be unified, a unified body, we must be comforted in our hearts. In verse 22 of chapter 6, it says, Paul says, I have sent Tychicus to you for this very purpose, so that you may know about us and that he may comfort your hearts. Paul tells the church in Ephesus that to be a unified body, we must walk together. That means that we must realize that there is one building built upon one foundation. We must realize that we all come in through the same door, that we understand the same thing, that we grow up, that we are careful how we walk, that we are in submission to one another in the fear of Christ, that our strength is in the Lord, and that we are comforted in our hearts. This week, make two lists. One lists ways that the Lord strengthens you. And in another list, list the ways that the Lord comforts you. Our strength is in God and our comfort is in God. And think about those things and reflect on how God strengthens us and how God comforts us. And as you go through this week, please keep in your mind what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 16. Uh, beginning in verse 14, remember it says that Jesus himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, 
that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by it having put to death the enmity. Walk in peace this upcoming week, realizing that Jesus has created peace. He has made peace for us. He's made peace between man and man, and he has made peace between us and God. And so as you go through this week, walk in peace. Remember that the gospel invitation is always open. It may be that you have not been reconciled to God through the cross. And if you haven't done that, please give that serious consideration. If you'd like to sit down with us and see what your Bible has to say about that, about your relationship with God, and about your need to be reconciled to Him, and the role that the Bible play, or that the that the cross plays in that reconciliation, please let us know. And if you have come to that conclusion that you need to be reconciled to God through the cross by being buried with Jesus in baptism, to be raised to walk in a new life, please contact us so that we can help you make that happen. And if you have been reconciled to God, but you have broken that relationship, uh, please let us know so we can pray with you and pray for you, put our arms around you, and do whatever we can to encourage you. Uh, if we can encourage you in any way, please let us know. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus and the door that he provides into the one body. We thank you for the building that he is and the foundation that he is. We pray that you'd help us to make use of all of this, uh, this information that we have about the body, that we can be part of the body by, by walking together and help us to work on our Christian walk and do what we can to walk in a way that is pleasing to you. Please help us to turn to the Bible for our instruction, for our guidance, for our information. And please help us to rely on you and your word and not on our own thoughts and our, our own ideas. And please help us just to turn everything over to you and, and trust in, in strength from you and trust in comfort for you from you. We thank you that the comfort that we have only because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us we thank you for that, that great sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen.